Let's embark. And have a look at our Act 1. Some nice starting options here. Niao's Lament can lead to an Elite Snipe, and look at this. That's a very reliable Elite Snipe. That's actually very good. Um, and leads into an overall very, very strong Act 1 path. Holy guacamole. Um, also, if all three of these events are not combats, then we get two free elites. So that's a very good Niao's Lament. Potential double snipe, almost guaranteed single snipe. Four elites total in Act 1. That's what you like to see. It's also possible you get two combats here and you fail the snipe, which would be a little sad, but uh, is possible. Could take a rare colorless card instead, which definitely could lead to a strong run, although might not let us take this path. What are the odds of getting a combat? Your odds for a fight vary depending on what you've seen so far. By default, it's a 10% chance for a fight. This is the the normal chances in an event room here. 63.75% chance of an event, 21.25% chance of a shrine, 10% for a fight, 3% for a shop, 2% for a treasure. However, each time we visit a question mark room, the odds will change. Basically, the odds that we find the thing that we just encountered goes down, and the odds that you find everything else goes up. So if we get an event first, then it'll be 20% chance for a fight. Something like 75% chance for an event. And the shop and treasure will still be there. John Stamos in prison, thanks for 22 months of support. I don't think I would ever boss swap in this position. It, it, it definitely between these two for me. But I am actually a big fan of starting with a snipe, particularly with such an aggressive Act 1 overall. Let's see what this gets us here. Let's go for it. Enemies in our first three combats will have one hit point. Allowing us to, at minimum, leave the easy pool fights with a full... 75 hit points, and at best it can do a lot more than that. Do we take a perfected strike floor one, or do I go more esoteric and take a flex here? I'm not sure. For Act 1 Elites, perfected strike is definitely a solid choice. It's perfectly fine on floor one. Does end up falling off later in the game sometimes, but it's not that bad. Sure. Fall into a puddle made of slime goop. Let's take some money going into that shop. This also loses us 11 health. But we're going to gain back all 11 of that health because of the burning blood with the Niao's Lament. So this is a free, quote-unquote, 75 gold. Can you keep the flex buff with orange pellets? You sure can. Oh, and then Cleric is here to either heal us, which is useless, or give us a cheaper move, which is not useless. Although I might want to buy a relic instead. Maybe we say no to Cleric here. It's kind of weird. Hmm. <clears throat> Hey, Weapon X, you're heckin' welcome. Sneko Rupture Combust Deck. That's kind of funny. I see I also owe the chat a dad joke. What do you call a priest who is also a fibber? A prostiliar. No refunds, twist yet. 
Hey, and look at that. I guess I should have paid for the card remove. We'll take 150 gold and a doubt, Mr. Snack. I'll take your deal. And we get the double snipe. Which might be overkill. For liar? I like that one too. Oh my good lord. Um, Can I have 800 gold, please? That is quite a shop. Apotheosis is the must-take. There's also Offering Dark Embrace, though. Uh, but I do agree. Apotheosis seems very good here. Allowing us to upgrade everything. You can even do Apotheosis Dark Embrace, keep the curse. I don't love that idea. But I do love the idea of getting Dark Embrace. How do you evaluate this removal of Strike versus Defend in the early Act slash Floors? Partially how much you need the damage, and also partially how good your character is at using their strikes. Like, how much damage does your strike do? Is it six, or is it more than six? Is often the question. For example, Ironclad can do nine with Bash. Watcher can do 12 with Wrath. For Defect, my personal advice, remove every strike. Don't even think about the defense. Just remove every strike on Defect. Defect can very rarely do better than six damage per strike. Has a lot of better other options and likes a small set of cards in general. <laughs> Just a little shy of Dark Embrace uh, quarter move here. Truly a shame. Guess I'll do the remove. We'll just have Apotheosis. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. So Apotheosis and two free elites is the start of this run. That's pretty cool. We get a white bee statue, so we're getting potions at every fight. Feel no pain or pommel strike. Could have already had feel no pain, dark embrace. I'll take the feel no pain, I think. You have to beat Hexaghost, but I'm not that worried. Let's grab a Feel No Pain. And let's upgrade that Apotheosis. And let's have a very difficult second battle against Lagavulin. Good fight. We get the Bronze Scales, giving us three Thorns. And we can take Carnage, True Grit, and Trench with the Feel No Pain. I'll take a True Grit here. True Grit sounds very good, in fact. Get a Relic. That Relic is Charon's Ashes. Every time we exhaust a card, deal damage to all enemies. I already want my Dark Embrace back. Thank you. Do I want this rest site, actually, is my question now. With an Apotheosis Plus, rest sites are a fair bit less useful. I'm also slightly concerned about not being able to kill Hexaghost. With the current deck. So what if we, instead of going to this fire, we go to this combat instead. Get an extra card award here. Get an extra potion. Get more money. Let's do that. And yeah, we're still in the easy pool, so it's a very easy fight. Is it, though? Is it, though? <laughs> My face. So-called easy pool. No, this is fine. We have too much health anyway. We could use a potion here, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. And the ashes get the kill. That's cool, actually. Is 
Headbutt's fine. Nothing wrong with Headbutt. These nerds are so dead. Do I have any record of my smoke bomb use percent versus discard percent? I, I don't think that I do. Good question, though. Intro Noir, thanks for four months of support. We do be slaying. Doobie dooby doo. Although if I take no damage, Hexaghost will murder me, right? Hmm. Concerning. Maybe murder is a strong word. Since I'm getting another potion anyway, give me a hand agreed. Bummer. Sundial is here. Holy moly. Uh, <laughs> all of them? I guess Flame Barrier is best for Hexaghosts, probably, but uh, any of these are good. <clears throat> we still have another Elite this act, by the way. I'm going to take the Impervious, but it uh, could be any of them. A Relic that would allow you to take one more card would be pretty cool. Or a Relic that lets you take everything from a card award would be pretty cool. It's been mentioned a couple of times as an idea. I do like it. Now we're at 40% event, 40% fight, 12% shop, 8% treasure, it looks like. Interesting. You get event trade at <clears throat> 23 health for two random upgrades is perfect. I was just complaining about our abundance of health. Not that the upgrades matter that much with the apotheosis, but why not? Why not? This fight is mostly solved by apotheosis. Mostly. Apo Impervious next turn? I guess so. Or I can just defend, defend, keep the uh, Impervious around, take one. That's probably better. Didn't draw the impervious though. But strike, strike, headbutt gets a kill. So let's do that. 45 health seems like a very good amount going into Hexaghost. We get a Duvu doll, giving us one point of strength and one more if we should take any curses. We're offered another perfected strike. Alternately, that reckless charge is kind of hype with the Feel No Pain and the Heron's Ashes. If only I had the Dark Embrace still. I'll take one more Perfected Strike, make them both slap nice and hard. And let's lose the Regen Potion for a Duplication Potion. Or actually, no, let's lose the Block Potion for a Duplication Potion. Keep the Regen Potion for next act. Heal back up to effectively full. Now we could take one more Fight or one more Event. I feel like we're winning against Hexagos now, and we're pretty okay at Act 2.
Would they have balanced? Would they have balanced Duvu Doll by now if Ascender's Bane wasn't an Ascension modifier, or is the relic fine? Well, they've left Darkstone Periapt as it is, even though it doesn't work with the Ascender's Bane, and it's not fine. So I doubt it would have changed personally. Ascender's Bane does make this relic a lot better. That's for sure. I don't think I need any more help for Hexaghost. Let's let's take an event here. Would be nice to get a remove or something. It's just a jawworm. We're still in the easy pool, apparently. Hmm. Wow, could have had second win with all the... Exhaust nonsense. I think I'll take a Pommel Strike here. Another decent attack. Makes the Perfected Strikes better. Any against the Storm soon? After this run, yeah. There'll be some today. <laughs> Why is it almost always Pommel Strike on Clad, but never Quick Slash on Silent? Two reasons. One... Quick Slash doesn't upgrade to draw two, which is a big, big difference. Actually, a really important difference. Um, number two is Sundial, actually. Sundial can allow the Ironclad to form an infinite combo with Pommel Strike pretty easily. As long as Ironclad uses their exhaust cards to remove all of the other cards from the deck during a combat, and you have two Pommel Strikes, you can play those infinitely with a Sundial. Silent cannot exhaust her own cards, so having two quick slashes in a 40-card deck can never go infinite, because you have 40 other cards that are a problem. But Ironclad can delete each and every one of those 40 cards if he wants to, um, which is a pretty big difference. That's also the kind of, in summary, the answer to why Dropkick Infinite is a thing on Ironclad, but Heel Hook Infinite is not a thing on Silent. Time to give up the ghost. So it is a whole 5 by 6 here. It's not too good, but not too bad either. Would have been nice to draw Impervious this turn, but oh well. We at least have Thorn's damage to deal back. We have the Sundial coming up. Hmm, bummer. So I could do Apotheosis Bash Perfected Strike next turn with the Sundial. So I do want this in play. Uh, I'm going to do this. Trade some health here. And some more again on this turn. If I wanted to do Pot, this would be the chance to do Double Perfected Strike for maximum damage here. And I think I should. Potions are cheap and free with the White Bee statue. And this is definitely a damage race. Let's just win that race. Okay, that feels a lot better. I don't think we need to use the regen potion, thankfully. Give Impervious next turn. Seems fine. GG. We, of course, get a potion and... Our choice of Barricade, Bludgeon, Berserk. That's a better than normal Barricade. We already have Feel No Pain Plus. We have an Impervious as well. So if we put the Barricade in play, it's quite likely we can generate excess block.
I have no problem with the, the, the GDQ discussion in chat. This is, of course, one of the biggest events on Twitch each year. I haven't watched a whole lot of GDQ in recent years myself. Um, but I definitely enjoyed watching GDQ quite a lot uh, the first few years I became aware of it. Very cool to see the, all of the incredible skills on display from so many different corners of the gaming world. And I continue to enjoy when they do um, awful games done quick, when they have a speedrunning block of really, really terrible games. Please tell me there's another segment of that this year. Have I considered speedrunning this game? Yeah, I, I did some speedrun-related things to Spire in the past, including an all-chivos, all-achievements run. It was one of the first. Ultimately decided to stop doing speedrun stuff for Spire, um, basically for reasons of ergonomics. Playing this game too fast will just give me an RSI. So I'd rather these days play it nice and leisurely like I am going to do barricade here hmm that's actually a pretty good sacred bark right interesting very interesting I think philosopher's stone is very good for more energy especially if we're looking to do barricade things we sort of need the phylo stone but uh, double strength potions is definitely worth considering here, given that we get one every single fight. But yeah, it's very hard to turn down extra energy, especially when that energy lets me do a play like Barricade Plus and Impervious Plus, or Double Perfected Strike Plus, or Bash and Perfected Strike. Pretty hard to turn down that energy. How do you know if you can be greedy with fatal cards, or when is it better to finish the fight as soon as possible? Well, if, as long as you know what the pattern of the fight is, you can sort of look at your draw pile or your average hand and figure out, you know, how much damage am I going to take if this fight keeps going? Um, what are the actual odds of landing the, the, the fatal card? You know, is it worth taking three damage this turn if next turn I have a guaranteed draw of feed and I'm definitely going to kill with feed? Absolutely. Is it worth taking 20 damage if there are 20 more cards in the draw pile and I only land feed if I draw them next turn? No, because you're taking way more damage and you have a much lower chance of landing the feed. Kind of have to look at both factors to get a full picture there. I really do like the Bark Statue interaction, but I, I think this might be better with Philosopher's Stone, with the current deck. Hopefully we'll find a Disarm, and that'll negate most of the downside. So, early shop would be nice, but I see we don't have one this act. All the shops are late in the act. Mm -mm. That's kind of awkward, actually. I have to skip at least one elite to get to one shop. Probably we should do something like this. Figure out how comfortable we are going into an elite. Can we do two elites or do we only want to do one? Far left and far right both don't look very good. Yeah. So we'll start in the middle. It is birds with Philo Stone. And they're all buffing on turn one. Um. Aha! <laughs> Secret barricade. Easy game. <clears throat> Fear my imperviousness. They can't hurt me. 
I'm too strong. Not bad. Whirlwind, very good AOE addition to the uh, to this deck. Currently, we don't have AOE beyond the um, Karen's Ashes, and we really got to fix that. That said, this is also a very good body slam. I need the Whirlwind. We'll pick the next body slam we see. But I'm pretty sure we need this Whirlwind. <laughs> Guess I'll use the regen potion. Probably we don't need it, but... I see it did help a little bit. Sort of. Yeah. And an entrench to go with barricade and headbutt. Wow. I will take that. Double your block plus barricade is a game winning combination. We're also offered a Ritual Dagger. If we kill an enemy with this card, it will permanently scale its damage. And that is quite good, actually. I don't know if I can land it every fight, but uh, I think that's a very good Ritual Dagger. Welcome. Hmm... Normally, I don't advise killing the Mystic Turn 1, but uh, if you can do this, kind of worth it. Hmm. Fair enough. We can also just draw garbage and take a bunch of damage. Though it goes, unfortunately. Hmm. Get a played feel no pain. Jeez. Feel like a real dum dum right now. Too many attacks already. We definitely have too many attacks at this point. For the block engine to work. Ah, uh, but what if I transformed two of those cards? Alternately, what if I took three strength on turn one? Makes Whirlwind really good. Now, I think I'm going to transform two cards. Lose two of our regular strikes here. Turn them into something else. We get Shrug and Spot Weakness, and I think that's a solid improvement to the deck. I'm not sure if I can do this. I really want to, though. I'm going to do it. First up, the Book of Stabbing. I already regret this choice. Let's see how it goes. Already sort of regret this.
Dang. Alternately, um, is this lethal? No potion there? Yeah, no. No, we wanted the potion on this turn. It'd be silly to shit. Let's see. 13 times 6 is still not a kill, right? Math time. <clears throat> it's only 78. Um, what if I do 31 plus 13 by 5? Plus three. We have exact lethal if I do this. And we get meat on the bone. If our hit points are at or below half after combat, heal for 12. Always at it. Interesting evolve. I think we should probably just take a shrug plus here. I might rest anyway going into this next elite, even though we have meat on the bone. Although upgrading the whirlwind could also matter. Rest. This time it is a gremlin leader. We did get whirlwind turn one. Just saying. I think I'm just going to use the Power Potion now. Give us a little bit more oomph in this fight. There's our Dark Embrace. Welcome, Dark Embrace. Speed 27, yeah. And that Dark Embrace makes all the difference here, as I can play Headbutt, Headbutt Impervious, Apotheosis, draw one card, Impervious, block for 40. I'm going to kill you now. Very smooth fight. Molten Egg is our relic, upgrading all attacks we find. I don't think that's actually very helpful because, you know, the whole apotheosis thing, but uh, it's here. Get these. Actually, Metallicize is not that bad with the uh, barricade. Wait, Body Slam? No, there's no Body Slam here. Having an, a free upgraded Body Slam from the Molten Egg is... Probably helpful, that's true. Let's not take this metallicize. Where were you last run, Blue Candle? Hello? Get out of here. Ouch. Do I want to shop? Unclear. Take another elite could be a thing. There's always meat va meat value after all. Hmm. There's always meat value. Oh. Could use the Distilled Chaos here. Pretty reasonable, actually. Sure. That was still pretty bad. Impressive.
Dark Embrace with a plus. Amazing. Doesn't get much better than that for this deck. Okay, I actually do want to go to two shops now because I think that removing two cards is going to be better than anything the Elite could possibly give us. We're going to keep up with this. Uh, hmm. Getting stronger. No Apo, huh? That's fine. Elixir's a good potion. Exhaust any number of cards in our hands. Now that we have the Dark Embrace and the Feel No Pain, a Seeing Red, which gives us energy as a one-time use, seems decent. Don't understand how the removal of two cards is more beneficial than Relics. It's all about improving the consistency of the deck. The fewer cards we have, the fewer turns it will take until we draw all of the powers in the deck, the more likely we are to see Apotheosis early, and once we draw through all of the cards in the deck, the quicker it will be until we redraw the cards that we have. In this deck, the main thing we want to do is draw and play this in Trench over and over again. If we can do that, then no enemy can touch us. So removing cards from this deck will speed up the power of the Entrench combo and just make the deck stronger and stronger. Yeah, it also helps us take better advantage of the Sundial here. However... All of that is worthless in comparison to a freaking pocket watch. Which says, whenever we play three or fewer cards during our turn, draw three additional cards on the next turn. And that is mighty, mighty good. We could also mirror any card in the deck, duplicating it. We could have double entrench, double ritual dagger, double impervious, double feel no pain. No, don't know about that. Honestly, I'm also just happy with, uh, like I said, a striker move. Double Apotheosis. I'm just going to remove a strike here. Isn't Pocket Watch anti-synergy with Dark Embrace? Pocket Watch helps us get the Dark Embrace in play. Once the Dark Embrace is in play, I no longer need it. But it's all about these initial turns where we just go barricade, almost strike. Now we get to draw three more cards on turn two, and that matters a ton before we have the, you know, Dark Embrace in play. Hmm. I don't like this draw. Could use the elixir here to land the ritual dagger. Elixir's a very strong potion, though. I really don't want to use it here. Might regret that choice. I don't, because I can headbutt. 
Corvius here. And again, all of this is in pursuit not of playing every card, but rather just playing the crucial cards over and over again, namely the Entrench. See, we're now in a position where we, we can make hundreds of block, which is a solve not just for the short term, but also for the late game. Also, there's a feed plus. Competes with Ritual Dagger, but, uh, yeah. I'll take that. And we're not going to the shop, because I can't afford to remove. So here, for example, I can eat one of them, and Ritual Dagger the other. Rather than spending our last energy on a piddly amount of damage, we want to skip it here to Pocket Watch. Maybe one or two Blessing of the Forge turn one. We're fine, though. And again, just draw more cards next turn. She can attack all she wishes. I'll do it this way. Wonderful. And there's our body slam. We'll take that. Deal damage equal to your block, says body slam. Referee with a 13 months, the baker's dozen. Heck yeah. And I'm just going to use the elixir to beat bronze automaton here. Could be really easy. Looks like we have to face tank uh, the damage on this turn. Hmm. If I headbutt Impervious, they'll steal it. That would mean I always get the powers, though, so that's fine. Actually, no. Um, steal the feed, even better. They steal the rarest card in the draw pile, so if not for a rare card, they'd be taking randomly one of the uncommons. I wouldn't know which one. Dark Embrace is not here yet, so this one is going to steal Dark Embrace, which means we want to prevent that if possible. Hmm. 
Thankfully, we can. Ow. All right, this is fine. I'm going to short one defend on this turn so that I can draw more cards next turn with the and then use the elixir to win. Yeah, the, the fatal keyword specifies a non-minion enemy. And these orbs are minions. Note the little skull icon. That means they won't increase the power of the dagger if we kill with it. And here's where we break the game. We go entrench, we headbutt the orb, put entrench on top of the deck, shrug it off, Play and Trench again. Now, Body Slam does 283 damage. Uh, and you'll note that the Bronze Automaton has very slightly more health than that. And I'll eat them. Guess I didn't need the Elixir. Beautiful. We've had first barricade, yes, but what about second barricade? There is Immolate here. What was the plan with Elixir? Basically to use it like a glorified gambler's brew. To exhaust a lot of cards and then draw a bunch of new ones. To get back to the Entrench, basically. But it so worked out I got 200 block even without it, so I didn't need it. I don't think I actually want any of these cards. There's Immolate for Repto, but we have Karen's Ashes and we have Whirlwind, so I really don't think we need it. I'm going to pass here. Fewer cards is better at this point. And the empty cage allows us to have fewer cards. Instead, we could go with Calling Bell to get more cards, obtain a unique curse, and three relics. One common, one uncommon, one rare. That would also give us strength here. Or we could transform and upgrade three cards. Get rid of Strike, Perfected Strike, Perfected Strike. And turn them into some upgraded cards that might be better. But they also might not be. This is one of the rare situations where I feel like Empty Cage is actually better than Astrolabe. Normally I value those upgrades. But with the Apotheosis it's not so important. So I think I'm going to remove two. Lose P-Strike, P-Strike here. Get rid of those. They helped us through the early game. We no longer need them now that we have the Body Slam working properly and the Ritual Dagger for front load. And I'd like to keep going to shops to keep removing cards. As mentioned, just purging all of those basic attacks will radically improve our outcomes here in the late game. But let's start with this shop. Pocket watch will save the day. that would be an upgraded Let's see if this works Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Card draw. Two pommel strikes goes infinite with the sundial, so I think we should take this, probably. 
seems helpful. I don't need an infinite combo, but it's nice to have. Also, it's time to spin the wheel. This could go well, or... We could get a relic. Would have preferred the money, but this is fine. Thanks for the Juzu bracelet. Deeply suspicious. I don't think I actually want a Juzu bracelet. Prevents combats from showing up in my event rooms, but here's the thing. Combats mean leveling up the ritual dagger or and slash or landing the feed. And I'm pretty sure I can kill Transient with this deck, so I don't want this. I'm going to leave it on the ground where it belongs. I'm going to snub the membership card. I'm going to card remove and buy a feel no pain. Take that, you stinky membership card. Instantly punished. <laughs> Instantly punished. No, I wouldn't take 999 gold here. I'll take the boss fight, thank you. It's Slime Boss, which is the best boss we could have encountered here. Because we can eat Slime Boss and Ritual Dagger Slime Boss. You'd love to see it. Lock it over here. You see I'm busy. Be back for you, feed. I swear it's wait. Hit butt. Get in here. Thank you. There we are. Again, note that little slimes are not minions in this fight, so you can eat them. Gambling chip. We can discard any number of cards on turn one and draw that many again. It's going to help our turn ones be really good. Uh, because we have a sundial, I'm going to click on a second Dark Embrace here, allowing us to draw even more cards when a card is exhausted. And I think I'll take Speed Potion over Power Potion? Is that true? No, I'm going to take Power Potion. Power Potion's fine. Power Potion's fine. Okay, that was good. That was good. We win now, yes? Yeah, I think this is going to be a very strong run from here. Very much so. Bonk. Don't need three of these. What power would I bottle? I would 100% bottle one of the Dark Embraces, although bottling Barricade is a bit tempting. Getting your card draw online helps you get everything else online quickly. So I think it's the right play. 
How do I decide whether to swap out the starting relic? I view the starting swap as a high variance start. So if you can survive the variance, for example, by having a, a path that's very easy in Act 1, but also having a path that's very strong in Act 1. Lots of elites. Hmm. I think this is Barricade Impervious. We can always headbutt Apotheosis here. Tough choice, actually. Yeah, let's headbutt Apotheosis. There we go. Nice. Not nice, I repeat, not nice. Dare you. Not gonna play that for Pocket Watch here. I've got stuff to do. There we go, all the core power is in play now. All other, all other things being equal, I think I would prefer to land Ritual Dagger as the kill over, say, the feed. I think it's got more value in the late game, especially letting you kill some really dangerous opponents very quickly. I'll take whatever happens to line up here. For example, we don't see the Ritual Dagger. Oh, there it is. Okay, let's do that. Really value the Ritual Dagger for letting us defeat the Elites of Act 4 very easily, in particular. What about Double Elixir? I feel like that's actually the best thing we could have for potions. Rarely is that the case. But with double Feel No Pain, double Dark Embrace, and a Sundial, I think these are very strong. I'll be back for you, Dagger. Thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Root Juice. Okay, I'll discard an elixir for that, I guess. Power Through is interesting. Normally, this sort of deck would love that, but I think this particular deck does not want to Power Through. So we're going to do Sundial things. It's cold now, says, if you dual wield Ritual Dagger does it, and you land three kills, does it upgrade three times or just once? Due to a bizarre interaction with dual wield, it will upgrade zero times, as none of the dual wielded cards are the original. Unless you have no other targets in your hand for the dual wield. If Ritual Dagger is the only attack or power and you play dual wield, then one of them stays the original for some reason. Uh, and that one can be used to scale, but only the one that's the real one, which you're on your own for figuring out. <laughs> and yes, that is janky and confusing. Did you know this game runs on spaghetti code? 
It's a hot mess under the hood. Is that really true, says Butner? Yes. The easiest way to see it in action is to use the power um, Master Reality, which upgrades cards that are created during combat. If you dual wield an unupgraded card, the copies created get upgraded because by the Master Reality effect. And so you can see that all three will be upgraded if you have... If you have to target the card for dual wield, and one of them stays unupgraded if you don't. I'm skipping these. Even the Sentinel, you heard me. I'm gonna go, I guess, this way. Although, we get an extra event if I go this way. Do I want two events? No, because we skipped Juicy Bracelet. Good talk. Let's fight Reptomancer. It's a pretty okay turn one. Yeah. Dark Embrace, Rug, Being Red, Barricade, Defend, Take One, Draw with the Centennial Puzzle. Seems fine. I believe I've determined what the elixir is for. Lose this too, actually. Good job, Elixir. You did it. Classic, we get Grumlin Horn from Reptomancer and a power potion. Potion Belt. Bottle Tornado, somebody asked me. Do we bottle Barricade or do we bottle a Dark Embrace? I think we bottle a Dark Embrace. The upgraded one, specifically. Love to see it. So now that Dark Embrace is always in the opening hand. Well, some days I wish I'd bottled Barricade. Today is one such day. Use you. Extremely rude. Did I ever play BG3 on or off stream? I did play it off stream, and I liked it quite a lot. Good game.
Is it fun single player? I thought so. Definitely thought so. Game with a ton going on, though, which makes it kind of terrible for the drop-in, drop-out style of viewing that Twitch supports. Might be better as YouTube videos, but I really don't think it makes a very good live stream game. My main class was uh, Warlock for my first playthrough. I tried playing um, Will as my as an origin character, which is apparently the wrong choice to use an origin character at all. Other than Dark Word, Dark Urge, Dork Urge. Oh, finally. Okay, we're we're out of here. About time. Fiend Fire, exhaust your hand, dealing damage for each card. That's like an elixir. In my hand, I like it. Eleven max health for a ride. That's not even bad. I'll take 11 max health. You can discard it with the gambling chip. How do I never forget the pocket watch? I'm pretty much always looking at the number on pocket watch. It's kind of the top priority. All right, I gotta live up to my own hype here. Can we actually do this? Survey says maybe. I'm going to try to feed, because I need the Ritual Dagger right now. We're trying to do something very specific in this fight, just to be clear. Unless we're not playing the Feel No Pain, because I'm trying to go infinite. And thus I won't need a Feel No Pain if I'm infinite. Body slam here. Also, not sure that with cards we have, we were actually able to do so sufficiently quickly. Got two more turns. We'll try something here. Yeah, this is more or less enough, right? We go Entrench. Body Slam deals 330. That's actually too much. Or is it? What if I just Body Slam? Pass the turn. But we're not playing Headbutt. Suffering from success. Kidding. Hmm. Is another entrench too much? Yeah, it would be. That would also be too much. So 
We could skip the body slam. That way we lower the amount of damage the body slam does. It's a viable option. Let's try that. Though I think we fail now under different reasons. Not enough energy this time. Yeah, not quite. We can go body slam, headbutt, crew grit, the body slam. If only we'd kept our elixir, we would have it here. Nah, not quite. Very close, though. Got very, very close. Playing both Dark Embraces, I think, did us in in the uh, Transient fight as well. Oh, well. Totally fine by me. take metallicize, but we're not going to. We're just going to go ahead and upgrade, I guess, this Dark Embrace. Make it a bit easier to play. And we're going to blunder into the Donu and Deca fight. How will this go for us? Is the question. Let's draw 10. You defend, defend, entrench, headbutt, entrench. And now we can just start scaling block like crazy. Counting that pocket watch here. Just again drawing back to entrench as often as possible is the main goal here. We can afford to make this fight last a very long time if we need to. Even though they're scaling their strength up dramatically, I'm doing the same thing to my block. And there's nothing they can really do to stop me. 
Yeah, world's worst fiend fire. We're skipping the fiend fire because of its preventing the dagger from landing. In the final battle against the heart, we won't have that restriction. So we can use the fiend fire a lot more successfully and a lot more aggressively. Let's use it here, in fact. Nice plated armor, nerd. Tasty. And next up is Time Eater. Don't need strength for Time Eater here. I'll play this though. That's not a terrible Veen Fire. said you could do that. I didn't say you could do that. How? Blocking. <laughs> Even more blocking. This would kill instantly. That's too much damage. I don't want to kill instantly. I want to eat you. Lower my block so that I can kill you. Thanks. Twenty one. Perfect. Get eight, you nerd. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all this blocking? You ready your block, blocking for 2,270. And then you slam your body into the spire for massive damage. Uh, we're missing three health. My upgrades really don't matter much. I guess I'll rest for three health. Because we have Apotheosis. Doesn't seem like it matters much. The stick. The stick is here. Dead branch. Although I don't really need it. Um, we could add a second True Grit or we can remove a card. It seems to me like a second True Grit would actually speed things up considerably. Shockwave might work as well. Let's take... True Grit Shockwave. Over card remove. And our goal here is to get silly. You buy Spoon to ruin my own build. Now there's an idea. Hmm. I think I want to play that. But you deal 14 to me and I draw 10 cards.
Fine. Wow. All of the cards were bad? I'm impressed, really. How did you manage that? Me? Hmm. Still a half decent entrench, maybe. Why no block pot? Because the block pot is far more useful with entrench than it was that turn. If I just drink it and save 12, we've only saved 12. But if I drink it and then play entrench, we've saved 24 or more. I'm going to yellow this True Grit, see what happens here. Lose a burn, that's good. Yeah, I think I'm going to play the Block Pot and then play Entrench. That'll block basically everything. We save 24 with the potion. Take two. Yeah, that was good. Fortunately, we failed to get the Ritual Dagger to do quite enough damage to kill the shield here. A bit unfortunate. Oh well, I suppose. I'll still play it. Spot weakness would also turn me around. Have I tried backpack battles? No, and I don't intend to. Ouch. Here we go. Good. Rug. Trench. Bunk slam. We can land the feed. We should. Very easy to land this feed. Just gotta be patient. It's probably also worth setting up the sundial for the hard fight. Let's try to do that also. going boy wonder i'm not sure if i want to play any more wild frost definitely enjoyed our time with it enjoyed checking out the uh bells system of difficulty they added with the latest update but lacking a little something in terms of replayability for me oh we got a dupe pot this will be easy then i don't even need to go infinite in this fight I'm, am I excited for Hades too? Oh yeah, certainly am. A 
very certainly. Didn't lose Body Slam. Feels good. That's where I have to stop. So we can play the Body Slam. I don't want to headbutt any of these cards. Maybe the Shrug Plus. Let's headbutt the Shrug Plus. Not nice. Oh, and it's Philostone Heart. We could actually die next turn. Hmm. Unless... Thinking, what if we fiend fire right now? I've already got double dark embrace in play. Where I'm going, we don't need barricade. Although it would help on the in between turn. I'm a little worried that we draw into the impervious and so then I can't play it next turn. How do we survive next turn if I don't impervious? We're going to have sundial. We draw a lot of cards. We do go very low on health, but we draw... Oh no, we're going to miss the freaking... Thundial again. Shoot, I always forget that it works like this. Ah, oh, damn it. Damn it. We just waste the energy, actually. Shoot. Ah, I screwed that up. I just cost myself this run, I think. Um, so did this draw order, though, quite frankly. Wouldn't matter if I had six energy here. Dang. That's dang, is what that is. Yeah, we're te we're totally dead. I underestimated Heart with Philosopher's Stone here. And we also drew our deck in a really awkward order, although I can't blame that every time we lose to Heart. I'm sure this fight was winnable with a different play line. Mm -hmm. Probably if we didn't use the Fiend Fire. Yeah, I think that Fiend Fire killed me. We will run it back for science. Yeah, we will. Let's let's do that. I just, I gotta know. I gotta know. So, our streak is over. We are dead. But, I do want to know how this would have gone a little differently here. We're going to do the same turn one play stuff. Rug. Grit. Power pot. Draw two. Draw two. Body slam. Headbutt the shrug plus. Betting the Shrug might have also cost us the run there, but we have no way to know that ahead of time. Let's try on this turn, we do the Shrug. Wait, where's our barricade? Different, interesting. Hmm. Invalid! Probably played something different on turn one or turn two there. Odd. But yeah, we can go Feel No Pain into Apotheosis into Duke Pot Impervious to not die here. And then I'm pretty sure we win from this position. Oh, and, uh, and previously I Power Potted after the first True Grid, I see. Although, without Barricade in play, I don't actually know about this. I 
Feels like we have too many cards. Hmm. Now we're actually just as dead here. This was a scarier matchup than I realized, I think. Forgot about the Philo Stone going into heart, quite frankly. We never found a disarm. Um, and this draw order was indeed very tough. We could not get the barricade in play and generate a lot of block nearly fast enough to win here. GG, Mr. Hart. Well played. Well played. GG. You can really see why we wanted to keep one of the elixirs for the late game. I wonder if keeping an elixir might have been able to keep us alive. Too late to know now. Either way, GG. That's a, a tough way to go. A little unexpected, honestly. I had kind of checked out of this run, um, thinking that we had it solved. Oh well. That was a pretty good attempt. Do I feel better after retrying? A little bit. Mostly I feel like I made the mistake a while ago, rather than in the hard fight. Could have taken the Juzu bracelet. Yeah, still a very good run, but uh, I'm caught off guard a little bit here. To have lost so decisively at the end game. We used the elixir in Reptomancer because it was looking scary against Reptomancer. And I discarded an elixir to pick up a fruit juice, which was a complete scam. I should not have done that. The fruit juice completely baited me here. And if I could point to one decision that I should have done differently, it's actually this one. Don't pick up this fruit juice. Keep the elixir. Big mistake. Don't think Bottled Barricade would have made a difference. It might have. I think it would have made our Shield and Spear fight a bit worse, quite frankly. Definitely would have taken Fiendfire in hindsight. Yeah, yeah. I think Fiendfire was good. It just needed to appear after the Feel No Pains, not before. Really, our, our turn one against Heart was so bad. I I think that really did us in. Not getting Barricade or either Feel No Pain. Or the Apotheosis was really quite terrible. And we drew a lot of cards, right? We drew um, five plus four from Gambling Chip plus three from Centennial Puzzle. We drew 12 cards on turn one. It's not like I didn't see a lot of cards. a hard game, man. Definitely a tough game. GG. Why don't I do a silent run to wind down a bit? Because I'm going to play against the storm. That's why. Um, that is what we're going to do after I take a break here. Twitch chat. I'm going to refill the legs, stretch the water. Then we're switching games. I'm going to play another mode in another game in the Queen's Hand mode of against the storm. So that'll happen in a few minutes before I that happens, though. It's break time, Twitch chance, so I will be RB. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> 